Now it's time to begin to look at annotation groups and how we can annotate our sheets, for example, plan or profile or cross-section sheets. And to begin to understand how these annotation groups work, let's go ahead and open the Delivered Feature Definitions DGN library. So we'll open that up. And we're going to open Project Explorer. And in Project Explorer, under the Standards tab, if we expand down, we have two entries there, one for the individual definitions and one for the groups. Typically you don't need to go into definitions unless you want to manually delete an individual definition that was created as part of the group development. But I want to expand down here under plan, under profile, and under cross section just to show you some of these entries. And in particular I'm going to start with our plan view and we have a, a group here that was created called stationing and I can right click on a folder and, and make a new one myself but we have one in here in our delivered workspace called stationing so let's right click and select manage and a couple of things to point out is this viewer is reading the active drawing scale that is currently set in the file and so if your text is really small you can close this dialog and go back to the utilities here and I'm going to go ahead and change this to a, a larger scale and then come back and manage again and that's that's the way you have to do that to get this uh, to show up bigger and so now we have some bigger text to look at but the way that these annotations work and we're going to go into actually creating some annotations in the next video this is just a general introduction is you will create for example in in this particular one you only have one option alignment annotations and with these particular categories and you can see how they are named like station ticks uh, major and minor we have cardinal station labels bearing labels and so on all of the basic fundamental labeling sets that we would need for particular civil engineering alignments and you would set for example if we looked at station tick marks major under the where you tell it what it is you want and so we're going to label in that particular example stations and those would be even and we would have a value every hundred and so you would see what those look like there and and you also have the option to highlight what particular entry you have and so you'll see that I'm highlighting then the major station tick marks I have the options then to annotate a lot with a line place a cell or to draw text and so these ticks these lines here are lines and I'm using a an element template that we copied over earlier the folder annotation then sheets plan and station ticks major and then I'm not using a leader here so that is set to false and so that's false everything else here is ignored so I can collapse that dialog then I can tell it how I want to place this particular line I'm going to be perpendicular to my alignment and then if I have an offset value I can set that offset value and in this case what it does the offset value shifts it to where it is placed in the middle or the midpoint and if you were to take the math here and double this you're going to see that the perpendicular offset versus the length is one and one half we're not placing a cell and in this instance we're not placing any text so this is what it produces now if we go down here for example and look at a station a cardinal station label and we'll go ahead and zoom into one of those here's a cardinal station label you can see what is comprised of this and again this one is instead of stations it's going to locate or label horizontal points and these are all of the locations or the horizontal points that I chose to label for cardinal station labels we are placing text and we pick the element template to control the symbology and this time we do have a leader and that leader as you can see I have a an offset ending location which is here I have a circle size which shows this circle and I have an element template that controls the symbology of that circle and of that line then I have to tell it how I want it to be placed again 
this is going to be perpendicular to the baseline and I have a lot of different options here on on how I can uh, set this and so we have you know offset value a left or right side a radius side reverse radius side and we have shifted the perpendicular offset on this to kick that label out and so we have a lot of different options there in terms of how that's placed we're not placing a line here uh, we're just doing text with a leader so the line is ignored and we're not placing a cell but we are doing is we're placing computed text so if you remember a few videos ago where we learned how to create text favorites this is a computed text favorite of a cardinal point and so if you refer back to that video on understanding the microstation text favorites this would have been part of that portion of the assignment of developing this workspace and so that is our favorite and if we drop down there you can see all of the different text favorites that we saw earlier now you can use the text style from the favorite or you can override the text style as part of this setting it doesn't matter if you don't choose a text style here it will use a text style associated with the favorite if you do use a text style here it will then assign that text style and override the text style used with the favorite we also have the capability here of of doing a a prefix so if I typed in a prefix there you would see that update and so we're going to take that back out just to show you how that works let that reprocess so this is basically an introduction to how we can you know set up our cardinal labels if we take a look at for example horizontal curve data you know if we have a curve label where the curve goes to the right in this particular situation we're, we're choosing to so label a, an arc that goes in the right direction and we are going to look then at horizontal components and we're going to place that in the middle of the cord and so you have a lot of different options there about what you're going to label and where you're going to place it with your horizontal components and then you have the, the fact that you're placing text in an element template no leader here you have your placement orientation there's no line work and no cells but we do have a text style and a favorite that controls the content of that particular label and so you can see just the different entries and you can go back and review how those are set up we, we even have an entry in here for station equations and so we have a station equation example over here that we built uh, station ahead you, and you can see that information and then the station back and so this is going to give you the uh, capability to customize your stationing we can even set up you know the horizontal curve PI triangles and the and the ahead and back uh, tangents and, and those settings in here can be reviewed and repeated so that's kind of an introduction we have the the same concepts then for our profile for example the profile grid we can take a look at and see how that is set up and again it's all about just selecting where, how you want things to look where you want your element templates to control your symbologies etc and so that we've given you a good go by example for the profile grid we have uh, existing strip grades uh, which is pretty simple you just you're going to be placing stations which is text there's no leaders involved uh, you set up your angle value which is 90 degrees and it's going to be along the bottom border and so you have your different settings there no lines no cells and then we have our our text favorite and then a style if you want that style to be different than what's in the favorite we have the normal profile annotations and so this one this one's a big one uh, it took some time to set this one up but you have your proposed strip grades down here you have things like your vertical curve PI with your back and ahead tangents, your circle, your, your partial station label here. And so you can go in, you have, look at your high points, your low points, uh, your curve lengths. Uh, and, and also you have your cardinal stations here for your vertical PC and PT with the uh, partial stations and elevations. So this one, this one took some time, and you have to deal with uh, sags differently than you do uh, the crest 
curves and where this information is placed and so I think that this will be a pretty good go by I'm sure that you'll certainly have to select different types of element templates and symbologies and those types of things but it's a good example to cover most of the areas that you would want to look at for profiles and I know there have been some questions about labeling along the bottom instead of on the profile itself that is an enhancement that they're working on and will be included in a, a future release we also have the, basically a, a scaled down version of the profile annotation here in the special ditch uh, where we just label the uh, PI station and elevation, a label line, a circle, and then a tangent slope. And so what I did to develop that is I just copied the profile annotation, gave it a new name, and then took out everything that I didn't need. Then on the cross sections, a couple things here to point out. Uh, the cross-section ones is a little bit different and it's going to take a little getting used to. You definitely want to take the, the scale down uh, before you work on cross-sections. And I kind of based everything on this imperial version on 1 inches 10 feet. Uh, and if you take a look here at the cross-sections, you have point annotation. And so under the point annotation you can uh, do grid linear which is like the slope of a line or point which would be things like offsets and elevations and so we have a grid annotation we have two slope annotations and we have point annotations the thing that is unique about cross sections is controlling where we label things and so if I go into this particular entry it's a totally different type of a dialogue and you have to set up rules based on what you want to label or what you don't want to label and the key here is to pick your template before you go into the where and so I can select for example you know any template I want to here it doesn't really matter but if I did you know undivided two lanes and I select OK then you're gonna see my dialogue update and then there's two ways that you can set up your filters um, you can say for example to use all points and then you can specify which ones of those all points that you don't want uh, for example you know I I'm setting up a point annotation here to label offsets and elevations if I don't want to have an offset and elevation for my guardrail or for my cable barrier I can omit those here and so what I did was I selected not and then I picked point feature definition and I selected that point feature definition that's one way to do it now what I've learned recently is starting with all points and then filtering down does make the annotation process of cross sections really slow down because it puts all point features into a into the array and goes through that array and scans to see which ones it has to remove the more efficient way to set these up and probably a change that I'll be making eventually in the workspace is to go in and just specifically specify which points you want to label it's going to be much more efficient than starting with all points in the template and working backwards you can select to create a list of points and then down here you can directly select the points from the template itself and so let's say for example I want to do the outside you know hinge point of my guardrail when I select that it will go ahead and place that here in this uh, point entry and so that is going to make your annotations of your cross sections much faster if you take that approach versus coming up here and selecting all points so I'm going to cancel that and so that is basically the the where is how it's so much different with the cross sections that you will be selecting a template but again it's what do you want to place so if we look at for example the offset and elevation label is text and we have the element template and that is going to actually use a a leader and if we look and see what that looks like we can actually highlight that entry and so you'll see those show up so it's going to place this little leader here and then we have the text favorite which we've talked about several times now for the offset and the elevation that we created and then if we take a look at slopes the reason that I broke up the left and right is to get the negative sign uh, to show up properly uh, initially I had done just a slope annotation and I had negative sides on one negative signs on one side and no signage on the other side for a downslope and so this is the way that I was able to break it up 
and I have two different text favorites set up for those and in the actual where here I've set up rules that basically say 0.1 offset is less than or equal to zero and 0.2 offset is less than or equal to zero and that those are not the two same points and that I also set up a parameter where they the width of the slope would need to be greater than a foot uh, before it would actually place a slope label and so these are just some different ways that some ideas that you might have to to take a look at to help you in setting up your different annotations and then lastly we have an entry here for labeling guardrail and cable barrier and right away and one thing unique about this cross-section labeling setup is that it's actually placing a cell and so you will see that we don't have a leader and we're not doing anything with text but we're actually placing a real cell here and these cells it's just kind of a limitation in the viewer they don't really show up here um, even if I picked a template that had them in there and this one actually does uh, for for whatever reason they don't show up but you wanted to go in and set them up anyway but the same goes here is that and this is a change that I'll be making in the workspace eventually is I started by using all points and it'd be better and more efficient to work this backwards uh, to say to create a list of points I want to annotate and then just pick the that guardrail point in this example so instead of filtering through many points I'm just going to actually go find the guardrail point and label it, which is going to be much more efficient and so this particular setup is all uh, for cells on the uh, cross-section sheets so those kind of an introduction to the annotation groups and some of the different ideas that you might uh, be able to pursue in your development and so what we're going to learn next is how do I get the annotations delivered from the examples workspace over to my particular agency's workspace if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.